Ephesians 2 says some incredible things about our uh, purposefulness and relationship with Christ. He, uh, Paul, in writing his letter to the Ephesians, spent what we call Ephesians 1. Of course, he didn't have chapter, you know, sections, but he spent all of chapter 1 really talking about what we have in Christ and who we are in Christ and what Christ has done for us. And his prayer at the end of chapter 1 is not that we would have more from God or more of God, but he actually at the end of chapter 1 is saying that we would begin to know. He's praying that we would begin to know. We'd have eyes opened and revelation to know all that we already have of Christ and from him. And so uh, he comes into chapter 2 talking about the very power that we have is the power uh, that raised Christ from the dead. And he comes to verses 8 through 10 and he says, For it's by grace that you've been saved through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The whole purpose uh, coming through chapter 1 and into chapter 2 He's talking about the grace of God for God's glory, that it would all be to the praise of the glory of God's grace, that what God has done, only God could do, and as it's made manifest in our lives, it would speak of him and not of us. It's to the praise, all of it, everything that we've received, everything that God has done, everything that he's doing in our life today is meant to be to the praise of the glory of his grace to us, that his riches in love and kindness to us would speak of him, not speak of us. It wouldn't make us more competent. It would make him more glorious in the eyes of the people around us. So he comes to this passage in in, uh, chapter 2. He says, it's that grace that you've been saved by, not of any works, so that we can't boast. It doesn't speak of us. And then in verse 10, he kind of caps this whole topic in in Ephesians 2.10. He says, for we are God's workmanship. Uh, Some versions say we are his handiwork. The the Greek word for that that Paul uses isn't just his craftsmanship. There's a a word for something that you make, like a stool or a table or a door. And he doesn't say that. He he uses the word poema, P-O-E-M-A. It's the the word we get poem from. It it actually means a masterpiece or a, a master work of art. We are his artistry. The life that we live is meant to be a canvas on which the circumstances, that canvas that he's working on, he's creating art and we're not what he's working on. We're not the canvas. We're already a finished work. We're complete in Christ. We have all things in him. Paul's prayer is that we would know what we've already got. So we're not the canvas that he's working on. We're the art that he creates on the canvas of the context of our lives. So as we're walking through circumstances that seem challenging, or we're walking through victories that seem wonderful, those are the context, the canvas, on which God wants to display his life. He's put us and made us to look wonderful in terms of his grace for his glory and the canvas, the circumstances, the context in which he has placed us. So sometimes we're the painting that he's creating, but he goes on from there. He says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ because you've been reborn in Christ with all of this beauty, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. So sometimes we are the work of art that he's working on, but it turns out that the work of art he's creating is actually an instrument for him to work on someone else. That he's creating of you a work of art like a beautiful piece of pottery or an artist's tool or an engineering marvel so that he can use his artistry of you in the context of your life to be useful in his artistry in someone else's life. It's kind of like saying sometimes you're the canvas and sometimes you're the brush. He's created a masterpiece of your life so that your life will speak of his life by his grace for his glory in the lives of the people around you. And the work that he's called us to is not for us to accomplish, but for us to walk in as he accomplishes that same artistry, that same masterpiece in different contexts, on different canvases of other people's lives. God is not calling you to accomplish great things for him. He's calling you to walk in his grace and sufficiency as he accomplishes great things through you by grace and you let him by faith so that his renown can increase in his beauty and his artistry and his trustworthiness and his power and his sufficiency in all things by his grace to you will be for his glory and his renown in the lives of the people who witness his work in your life. Thank you.